So let's talk about 9-11. We are right now in the anniversary of that terrible event. And I think it would be lacking on my part if I uh, did not at least talk about it on my YouTube channel. Uh, 9-11 feels like something that happened a long time ago for a lot of people, but for me, it still feels like something that took place not too long ago. Uh, and that really is the case. 20 years is not really a long time, but in the feelings department, it seems like something that happened a long time ago. Uh, I remember that day, um, I was uh, close to 11 years old. My birthday is on September the 18th, so I was very, very close to being 11. Uh, I was sleeping on the morning of 9-11. I remember my parents uh, yelling at me from the other room, Ted, Ted, wake up, come look what's happening. And I was just dead in my sleep. I did not want to wake up. And my parents were saying, Ted, Ted, get over here, get over here. And I said, I'm sleeping. <laughs> and um, they said, get over here. We're <laughs> America just got attacked. And for some reason, my brain translated that statement as look at what Egypt did or it was something it was something like that or look at what happened in Egypt or something i guess attacked sounded like egypt i don't know but i remember saying i don't care about egypt and they said get over here so eventually i i got up i uh, walked into the room where the television was playing and I saw the screen and I saw the buildings on fire. I watched the, 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 the second plane uh, hit. Um, I watched the attack happening live and it was absolutely horrifying, absolutely uh, disturbing. But my father, he was disturbed, but he wasn't that surprised about what was happening because uh, in the 1990s uh, and before 9-11 happened, my father was telling people at our church that the Muslims were going to uh, murder Americans, that the Muslims were going to uh, blow up American buildings, and most people did not have any care in the world for what my father was saying. That day, uh, my father's life, my life, the lives of my family completely changed because our telephone never stopped ringing. Everybody wanted to talk to my father. Radio stations, TV stations. Overnight, my father became a media figure. CNN, Fox News, uh, BBC, all of these major media outlets wanted to talk to my dad because at that time, there were very few people who were talking about Islam. Um, my father was one of the first people on the internet, uh, to talk about Islam. Uh, my father converted to Christianity in 1993 when I was just three years old. And my father began to write, uh, articles and online books on Islam. This was in the nineties when the internet was just a brand new thing and you needed uh, a telephone line to have functioning internet access. 
And my father would go to church every Sunday. We'd go to the Baptist church. And I remember my father telling people in the Sunday school class, beware of Islam, beware of Islam. And at that time, even though there was Islamic terrorism happening in various parts of the world, Americans, for the most part, did not care about Islam. Most people had no idea what Islam was. They, they had no idea what Islam was. They, 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 they didn't have the slightest clue. Never really looked into it. Never saw the need to look into it. Um, and I remember there was someone at the church, I think it was the pastor, who told my father, stop talking about Islam. That's not our focus here. Let's focus on the Mormons. Let's focus on the Jehovah's Witnesses. But let's not talk about this Islam stuff because you're diverting us from our main focus. And that was the state of America's attention on the Islamic religion. But then 9-11 happened. Overnight. All of a sudden, everybody wants to talk about Islam. Overnight, all of a sudden, you have all these people claiming to be experts on the Islamic religion. And before I knew it, my father was going to all these different media studios. He was flying to New York City to do a speech for some uh, secular Jewish event. Um, all these different radio stations wanted to talk to him. And I remember uh, one morning walking out of my house to go to school, and I see this huge black guy with sunglasses and a suit on. And I'm like, who's this guy? And he turns out he was the driver who was going to drive my father to the Fox News studio so that my father could give an interview. So my father became famous. Um, he was on Bill O'Reilly. He was on Sean Hannity, uh, Alan Combs, Michael Savage, uh, Dennis Prager. Uh, all the Glenn Beck, all these big major names in media. And the whole my whole life changed. And I remember there were times when uh, my father would be gone for months, going to universities, speaking here and there, uh, went to Ireland, went to the UK several times, South Africa, Australia, Chile. Mexico, went all over the place. Um, and my father was a pioneer in on the subject of the Islamic religion. He was a pioneer. But then there were people who popped up later on who all of a sudden were touted as experts on the Islamic religion. And a lot of these people were secular. A lot of these people were atheists. Um, and they wanted to restrict any talk on Islam to, uh, to just uh, a, a secular lens. So when you talk about the Islamic religion, don't talk about your Christian faith. Just talk about Islam as a secular issue. And that became the mainstream uh, focus on Islam. And um, after 9-11, things escalated. Um, and before you knew it, you had a war in the Middle East. America invaded Iraq in 2003. And my father's uh, popularity continued to increase. Now that America was in Iraq, more and more people wanted to talk to my father. Uh, and um, I remember how divided America was on that war. Um, initially, people, Americans, the American populace, thought it was a great idea to invade Iraq. But then it didn't take that long for people to get extremely divided on it. Well, it turned out there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Why are we in Iraq? Et cetera, et cetera. People on the left were very much so against the war. People on the right were very much so in support for the war. And what did that war cause? I mean, it caused numerous things, right? The end of Saddam's reign. Um, 
it led to an American-made state within Iraq, which was completely reliant on the existence of American uh, of the American military in Iraq. Um, but it also led to a lot of instability that America had to contain and and curtail and control. Thousands of American soldiers uh, were killed as a result of this. And the United States went from fighting Saddam's army to fighting insurgents, fighting ragtag militias, people, Iraqi people who hated the United States. It's like, well, I thought we were fighting Saddam. Now we're fighting all these armed civilians who are really terrorists. So that instability led to the rise of Iranian power because Iran was kept in check by Saddam Hussein. And now Iran was growing as a power. Iraq is a country that is mainly inhabited by uh, Shia Muslims. Uh, Saddam was a Sunni who kept the Shiite population under control, uh, and he scared the Iranians. Now that the Sunni power was removed, the Shia dominated Iraq. They are the majority. And so that gave the green light that gave the opportunity to neighboring Iran to capitalize on the situation and begin to expand its political leverage within Iraq. So now you have Iran waiting for the opportunity to begin to use Iraq as something of a proxy or to use the Shia in Iraq as a proxy. And that's exactly what happened. And that is still happening today. So the rise of Iran. And I remember in the early 2000s, all of a sudden, the Iranian nuclear problem became one of the biggest subjects ever. How are we going to control Iran? Is Iran making a nuke? Does Iran have a nuke? Is Iran going to nuke Israel? And this was... Uh, uh, this had been a controversy for some time, but it became even bigger at that point. And I remember Ahmadinejad became the president. Ahmadinejad became the president of uh, Iran, and he said, we're going to destroy Israel, death to Israel. America is the big Satan. Israel is the little Satan. Glenn Beck was talking about this. Hannity was talking about this. This was a huge, uh, a huge issue. And my father was all over the speaking circuit talking about these subjects, which led to me becoming very much so interested in the political discourse occurring uh, in America and also having a deep fascination with current events and things that were happening all over the world, terrorism especially. Um and I remember getting into arguments with teachers about the Islamic problem because my teachers, for the most part, were big lefties. And the arguments were very intense. So then, um, with all this talk about Iran having a nuke, does it have a nuke, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, eventually, um, this uh, controversy uh, came to the point where America did a deal with Iran under Obama. And Obama eventually pulled the troops out of Iraq. Or at least that's what we're told, right? Obama did it. Is it Obama or is it just the, the upper echelons of power within U.S. foreign policy? I don't know. I can't really... I mean, you kind of can prove it, actually, but... You have to, uh, you you have to uh, give some reference to the narrative, and the narrative is that Obama did it. Okay, fine. So, the Obama administration pulls the troops out, and all hell breaks loose in Iraq. ISIS, right? ISIS pops up. And the instability in Iraq, alongside the instability in Syria, because let's not forget, removing Saddam also had a ripple effect into Syria. And Islamic fundamentalism, um, 
greatly erupted, I remember, in 2011, 2012, and all these people wanted to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. And so a civil war broke out in Syria. And once the troops were with, uh, withdrawn from uh, Iraq, that instability uh, expanded into Iraq, and all hell broke loose, and everybody was talking about Iraq again. And you had ISIS, and ISIS was releasing all of these very highly produced videos of murders that ISIS was doing. People on meat hooks, people being lit on fire, people being beheaded, shot. It was a nightmare. And uh, all of that instability led to a migration crisis. And that migration crisis went right into Turkey, and from Turkey it went right into Europe in 2015. And in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, we saw the political atmosphere in the Western world uh, experience a very sudden and violent shift to uh, political fanaticism. All of a sudden, parties that we would consider fringe or that Europeans would consider fringe were gaining substantial victories in elections, be it in Germany, be it in Austria, uh, uh, be it in uh, Denmark, Netherlands, Sweden. We saw parties that were fascistic, Nazistic, ultra-nationalistic gain power, gain parliamentary power. Um, the Sweden Democrats uh, got a lot of votes, got a lot of uh, seats, and the Sweden Democrats are a party that were literally founded by uh, members of the SS. Uh, the Austrian uh, uh, Freedom Party, uh, Austrian People's Party, ultra-nationalistic. Um, if you look at the Austrian, uh, the Austrian uh, Freedom Party, full of fascists, full of uh, Germanic militarists, people who want to revive the Austrian Empire, people who want to bring back the Reich. All of a sudden, these parties became very, very popular. Why? Because of the migrant crisis. And we saw the world shift tremendously to a scary level. And so looking at the world, we see a rising Iran. We see massive uh, instability in the Middle East, civil war, horrific violence in uh, Iraq, Syria, Libya. And we see the Western world turning to political fanaticism. And all of this begins with 9-11. Anyway, you guys just heard some theology. God bless.